I would probably take an average 1-2 grinder playing his A game over an average 25-50 grinder playing his C game any day. You're listening to the Mindset Advantage Podcast. Each week, you'll get to peek inside the greatest minds in the game and discover what makes them successful. Mental toughness separates those that can't handle the stress. If you're going to treat it like an amateur, you're probably going to have amateur results. Here are your hosts, Elliot Rowe and Adrian Talonchik Rousem. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It is hard to believe that we are already at the end of 2017. I almost said 2018, so maybe it is easy to believe that we're already here. It's been quite a year. Lots has gone on in the poker world and in our world, and we thought we would just take a minute to recap, look forward to 2018, figure out what we can do to thrive in the poker world, both on and off the table, and see what's coming up for both myself and for Elliot. 2017, what can you tell us? If you had to pick a, I, I could, you could pick top one or top two, what were your highlights of the year? I think working with Scott, winning the the main event, obviously is a pretty big highlight. <laughs> that, uh, one, that one stood out, definitely. Um, it was great to have someone win the main event, and to be out there when he won it um, that was definitely really huge this year and yeah a poke has gone really well lots of people have won some some great tournaments yeah it's been it's been a fun year to be on this side of things so uh, working with people reaching those levels of success no kidding the, the excitement of somebody as they get down to the the, the final few hands at, at, at the main, main event of the wsop i'm sure the the energy is just uh very contagious it was a ton of fun actually so being on the rail there and you know, he got it in good a number of times. And he kept missing the hands and, and we'd sort of be back again and back again and down and come back again. And then um, eventually he got it in bad and won. So it was sort of like a moral, a moral story about the way poker works. Um, oh. But it was really exciting and it was just a really fun experience. Obviously, it's nice when everything goes your way and, and it did for that day for us. But it was a really wonderful experience. It still certainly takes a lot of mental fortitude to be able to handle those you know you've got him down to the felt you've got him ace king to ace jack or whatever the hands were and you're just like wow wow i just have to fade you know this and and then you don't you have to be have some strength and some ability yeah. to come back from that I, I mean one of the things that we sort of practice with that is you know accepting that you're fortunate enough to be taking those chances so you've built the large chip stack and that gives you your shots. It gives you your, your chances to do that. And then, you know, if you just have to build it back, you have to build it back. It's part of the game. The next hand's just another puzzle to solve. And we wait until it works out. And this time around, it worked out. So philosophy stood true. There it might have been a bit, I'm sure it would have been tougher if it had gone the other way for him. But with everything going correctly, I think it was just a wonderful experience. That definitely used to be one of my biggest leaks in poker was that I would be like, I, they always knock me out on a bad beat. I switched my mindset at some point and I started to think about, well, what have you been doing in the hands leading up to the bad beat to build a chip stack to protect against the times where you don't have the equity doesn't run out in, in your favor. And when I made that switch, that definitely kind of helped me get a better idea of about poker tournaments. And, and it's actually a really good sign. If you're always going out on a bad beat, it means you're doing as well as the cards will let you do. If it's a case of, oh, I'm always going out when I get it in behind, you should really be looking at your game. <laughs> 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 That's not the card's fault. So yeah, I mean, most people notice that. The reality is, you know, maybe a normal tournament, a thousand people enter it, one person wins the tournament. It doesn't mean that they got their money in good every time and everyone else got it in bad. All it means is that it was their turn to win. But the way that you play, you can increase your chances of being that person. But as I say, lots of players mention that. They say, it's always the bad beats that get me. And it's like, well, you're a good poker player. It should be bad beats that get you. You know, Fair like, enough. It's the reality of a game. <laughs> It's always nice to look forward and to kind of try to figure out what you could do better. Do you have any secret tips or any, any things that you might think that your poker clientele should look, look forward to, to doing better in 2018? Or where, where are most of the leaks coming to you from? I think the, the big one that I noticed this year, or well, not in terms of a leak, but certainly a shift in the industry in general, was people becoming more professional. Obviously, it's something I've been pushing for a number of years, but I think it's something that's becoming more accepted now, 
that you know playing poker high is not a good idea. Playing poker drunk is not a good idea. You know that setting yourself up with exercise, making sure that you're doing your study effectively, scheduling in your poker playing times. These are things that are happening out there now in the online professional poker world. And they're things that weren't happening as much two to three years ago. So that would be the big theme, I would say, for players moving into 2018. If you're not doing these things, it's time to become a professional very quickly. Not a professional in the financial sense of the word, but a professional in, if someone looked at you, they would say, this is a serious poker player they're doing this as a job rather than someone that would say well it looks like they're doing their hobby so i'd say that would be the biggest shift i would recommend to players um, to try and get that extra reg for next year and coming into january it's always such a good time of the year to well good time or a common time of the year to, to set goals be them life goals be it poker goals and and things like that. I know definitely that uh, one of the things that we talk about in our house is, is, is trying to figure out how to thrive in poker in 2018. <laughs> Always, right? We, we don't, we don't want to just do well. We want to thrive. We want to take whatever's thrown at us and just, you know, blossom, thrive, thrive. I, thrive is, I like that word. When it comes to goal setting, what type of goals do you like to see your clients setting? So my preference is definitely goals around the systems that they're going to be running rather than financial goals. So I would be looking for my clients to say that their goal is to hit a certain number of hands in a month, to exercise a certain times, to do a certain number of study hours, to create a, a meditation routine they're going to be following throughout the year. So systems that they'll be putting in place that they can follow for the year that will allow them to achieve their full potential in poker rather than say my goal is to win $100,000. Because the issue with that is we don't have much control over the financial results in poker. So setting a, go- setting a number goal can be quite difficult. We don't know if it's accurate. Um, and you know, there's always a chance that you hit that target very quickly. What are you going to do for the rest of the year? Do you then risk that money that you end up at the end of the year and you've gone on a downswing and now you haven't hit your target? Or are you going to take the rest of the year off? Um, it can create some conflict when people put fixed static numbers in place. So I definitely think having the, so focusing on your systems, setting numbers of hours played, life balance goals, exercise goals, those sorts of targets are going to be much more effective for making the most out of your poker in 2018 than just an arbitrary financial figure or I want to win the main event, which obviously if it happens, great, that's been wonderful that you won the main event. But those things are a little bit out of your control. <laughs> so, so does that mean that you you won't be in full support of my goal to win a platinum package from the Poker Stars Players <laughs> Championship? <laughs> Well, I, you know, if you put your mind to it, Adrian, and, <laughs> and, and talk, to your, talk, talk to your sponsors, Poker Stars, you never know. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think, I think the rigged comments would be too prevalent. Yeah, it might, it might cause some issues if um, you're one of the platinum plaque winners, that's for sure. But I definitely think that for me, one of the things I, I just really need to do is I need to be really accountable to my time. It's so easy in our day-to-day life to say, oh, you know, I just don't have time. I don't have time to study. I don't have time time to do an mp3 i just need to go i need to be at the computer and i need to go that's the pitfall that i fall into probably the most just running from one thing to another and not making the most of every minute that i have and it's difficult for everyone and obviously you're busy you've got children and it, it is a difficult situation but the way you know i've helped people do it in the past is to create systems you know i'm going on about systems but it's because i believe it's important so create systems and schedules for yourself to follow that that rationally will lead you to success if you follow those systems. So scheduling in your hours, scheduling in the time to warm up. And I mean, obviously, I know you're an MTT player, so it's a little bit different. But one of the issues cash game players have with this sort of problem, they'll be scared of missing out on a table. So the first thing they'll do in the morning is turn their computer on. And then if a table pops up, they'll suddenly start and they won't put, you know, it it will just disrupt their entire life because they'll jump and sit at a table. Now, if you're at the absolute nosebleed stakes, that might be the case you have to do that because they run so infrequently in games that you'd want to play. But if you're in anything but those, usually it's a false economy. And really, you should be doing your warm up. You should be setting yourself up, making sure that you're prepared, that everything else that you need to be needs to be done has been done before your session and then sit down and start up your session. So it's just a case of sort of getting that control, pre-planning it, and then trying to maximize every minute that you have. How far in advance do you think people should set goals? 
I think the targets, I think it's a very good idea to get started at the beginning of the year. Like, obviously, we, we all know it's a new year. People are going to be wanting to set targets for 2018. Usually, I'm recommending looking at sort of a three months, three months of goals and then moving forward. So um, look at what you want to achieve, again, system-wise, habit-wise over those three months and set those sorts of targets. So over the next three months, I want to be exercising three times a week on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So break it down as far as possible and take out as many of the thought processes as possible. So let's, if we take exercise as an example, so it's not, I want to do it three times a week. It's that I want to do it three times a week on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays at 10 a.m. And I would also like to be going to the gym on Mondays, going for a run on Wednesdays and on Fridays, I'll be going back to the gym again. So at each time when it comes up in your calendar, you don't have that 10, 15 minute argument in your mind as to what is it I should be doing today. So all of that mental energy that can be wasted if you, if you don't do it like that. So that would be sort of my idea for it is, is it's the right way to do it. Finding time in your day by just introducing simplification. Exactly. And then just, re, you know, repeating it throughout those three months and then refine it. You, obviously, things are going to change. And um, as you move forward, it, it might be that you're doing four times a week and you're changing what you're doing. So just gradually improve it over the year. But I think setting for around three months for a target, certainly for habit building, is is the sort of thing I'd be recommending. So what have you got in place for, for 2018? <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know what? What 2018? are we committing to? 2018. I might have to call you up for a session. (laughs) It's a really interesting year for me because as most people know, I'm an occupational therapist by training, but I haven't worked as an OT in the last two years. And I'm at a spot right now where with our licensing body, if I don't work 600 hours, I won't be able to register without kind of proving my competence and doing all the things that safeguard the public from incompetent healthcare professionals. This year, I have to I have to make some pretty big decisions as to whether I'm going to pursue some options in occupational therapy alongside poker. Am I going to just go 100% poker and just say, okay, occupational therapy, it's been a slice, it's been great, or what? So th- this is all kind of in, in the discussion stages here. It's, it, it, wow. it's, it's, That's it's, some serious it's, decision time. There really is. And, you know, it, it's... Some of the hardest decisions in my life have been decisions where there's no downside. And I really feel like that is this decision because I enjoy occupational therapy. I I don't feel obligated to work. You know, like it's not a pain when, when when I'm doing that work. So there's lots of things for me to think about, which is that, but uh, I have in the last month been a little bit more diligent in using my planners and in using day timers to just sort of keep my life in in order and get my checklist done. In the process, yesterday, actually, I was getting a Trello board uh, sorted. I don't uh, Do you use a Trello board? Um, yeah, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan talks about it. Ryan, Ryan, yeah. <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> and so, so Ryan, yeah, Ryan so, Adrian's husband's my business partner, so he, he, makes, <laughs> me do, he makes me do Trello. <laughs> so, yeah, but, you know, it's just a nice way to lay out all your objectives and and all the little tasks you have to do because some of the stuff you have to do takes five minutes but it can sit on the back burner for months always nice when you get the ticket ticket off and move it to the done column Mm -hmm. so So in terms of 2018 obviously we've talked a little bit about planning being uh something that's very important and then being a very plus ev change that listeners can make what other changes could they maybe try to focus some of their goals on going into 2018? So there's the planning. Another thing, certainly, you know, for, for poker players, which it is still something I notice, but I don't notice it quite so much now, is accepting that you're allowed to game select and that you can look for the right tables and you should really be looking at the highest profitability spot in most cases. Like sometimes you need to challenge yourself to improve your game and play against really good players. But most of the time, I think players, certainly online players, should be aware of who they're playing against, the player pool at the time they're jumping into, if they're a Zoom player or if it's an MTT, and and just be aware that your profitability is based upon how how good you are at the table you're sitting at, not how good you are in general. So um, there's always a table somewhere in the world where you're very, very profitable. And there's always a table somewhere in the world where you're definitely losing, (laughs) (laughs) you know, except for three of you out there who are awesome, obviously. So I would say that would be a a habit that I would really, you know, push. If, If you're someone who's out there and you play online 
and you're not looking at your field, you're playing against the tool, I would say that there's a lot of money that you're leaving on the table compared to putting in that little bit of extra effort and rather than just clicking sit, um, have a look first and, and then click sit. So not, not even, not just studying poker hands and not going through scenarios, but also just even being aware that st- study encompasses a lot more than individual oh, hands. The, the macro game is huge. This is one of the parts of, of the macro game of poker. So I would say this actually probably has more value to most players than the technical study of the hands. Once you're at a certain level, it's going to be very hard for you to generate an edge for you know two hours of study on a particular spot. However, two hours of study into the most profitable game type or the most profitable time of day to you to play, that two hours of research that you can do might be incredibly profitable if you've never done that research. So, you know, there's lots of little tricks like that where, you know, think a little bit outside of the box and um, and, and question, you know, is, is there an extra edge I can gain? And obviously, you know, do your study, play your volume, but but playing the right games for you, for, for the bankroll you have and the skill level you're at. And then when it comes to volume, if you have players who are saying, you know, I think it's going to be really plus EV, my ROI is this in the game, I need to play more. Uh, do you have any suggestions for how players can look towards playing more? Um, yeah, I mean, this is this is something I've focused on a lot in the past. Um, I actually have a, a video series called The Simple Volume System that's part of the academy I run um, to help players not just play as many hours as possible. It's obviously simple to say, just sit down and play poker all day. Um, the reality is that's not going to be very effective <laughs> if you're going to burn yourself out. So again, put the schedule in place, decide how many hours you believe that you can focus for in a week, make sure that you have time built in for your time off, for your exercise, for meditation, pre-game routines. Make sure you have at least one entire day off from poker completely a week. And that's at least, not not the maximum. And build something that's going to support you playing volume long-term. So we want to see a schedule and a plan in place where you can realistically do that schedule every week of the year without collapsing. So if you look at your schedule and it looks like it's going to be an absolute grind and a miserable because you're putting in 70 hours of poker in a week, your schedule is just wrong because there's no way you're going to be able to carry that through for the 52 weeks of the year. So create a balanced, sensible set schedule with study, play, exercise, life, you know, life's other parts as well, friends and family, and then stick to it. And then after a couple of months, see how you've been doing and refine it and optimize it for what you've learned from that first period of time. Now, you mentioned the Poker Mind Coach Academy. What's coming up? What we're doing is we're opening the academy again. The enrollment isn't open throughout the year. Um, so we're going to open it up again next week. Um, so on the 26th, we're doing an open house where we're going to be giving away nine videos that, that we've made over over the year in the academy. So different interviews with top professional players, seminars by myself. So each day there'll be three videos over the three days um, that are released, one every eight hours. And then at the end, I'm going to do a webinar on how to thrive in poker in 2018 without burning out. So I'm going to be doing that free webinar at the end of the week. And effectively, this is to give people a, a taste of what they get with the Academy, how it works, and then decide if they want to join up um, before we close the enrollment again. What, what we do is we only open it a few times a year because otherwise you guys listen to the podcast, we get fed up with me advertising. <laughs> advertising it every week. So it means I can I can focus on doing other things. And then, you know, two or three times a year, we'll look at the academy, open it up, um, do an open house event like this, and then close it again until later in the year. So we've got that coming up. It's, it's a lot of fun. We've actually, what we do is every month, one of the seminars I offer, I do three seminars a month. And each month, we one of those seminars is bringing on a professional player to come and do a Q&A to answer the questions of the people in the academy. We've done pretty well with our lineup coming up. So we've got Fedor coming on in, at the end of this month. So on the 29th of December, um, we've got Daniel Negreanu signed up for January. And we've got Scott Blumstein, who won the World Series, who I was talking about earlier, coming on in February. So I'm pretty excited about the, 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 killer, wow. the killer poker lineup that we've... Um, I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to think I'm trying to think of a better lineup. I, I, I really, really tried. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. We'll get you on. We'll get you on. You were supposed to want. stay looking away. No, 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 no. No, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, and they're all from similar but still such different areas, you know? 
Yeah, I mean, they're all, they're all MTT players. You know, they all play live, but they've they've seen different parts of the game, and I think they'll resonate with different people as well. So, you know, obviously Fedor, as he is incredibly professional, the very highest levels of the game from a technical point of view, and crushing the high rollers. Daniel, who's seen the history of the game over the last, you know, most dominant player over the last two decades, um, and certainly, I mean, has won the most money of anybody in live MTTs currently. Obviously, then Scott being able to talk about his experience of going from you know, a grinder like everyone else. He was just, yeah. he was a life pro before the win. And, you know, the experience of how to deal with going from a normal poker pro to the guy who's just won the main event, and you know, all of that attention. So I think all of them are going to bring a different, a different angle to the academy. And I think the other thing that's good with MTT players is they really have to work very hard on their mindset because if you're playing a cash game, you know, you might end up 200 big steam, but, you know, it's never going to, one pot is rarely going to be absolute life-changing if, you, um, if you're if you playing within your bank. Whereas for the MTT players, you know, there, there's some big jobs. <laughs> I think it really tests you because certainly these multi-day events are exhausting. Even just single sessions online, it can be 10 hours, it can be huge numbers of decisions. And then the pressure increases as they get deeper and deeper. And, you know, you might be winning hundreds of, not big blinds, but hundreds of buy-ins at your stake level. And I think that's why I find them very interesting to talk to regarding mindset, because the pressure on those guys is so huge. And, you know, the, these are people who've shown quite clearly that they're, they're the best in the world at doing it. Yeah, we wanted to bring them on for a chat. So we've got that and we'll be running some seminars, as I say, throughout the month. So a lot of fun. And we'll also, one of the things that we're introducing and been working really hard on is um, we've created a, a poker planner. So the A-game planner so that poker players have the sort of the scheduling I'm talking about, planning for exercise, for study, setting your targets for the month, building these routines, having things in place to then work through those routines and you know, improve the next series. Um, we've designed that planner and that's one of the things we're going to be giving away in the academy. So everyone who signs up will get a hardcover copy of our planner to um, fill out. And basically, we can watch their progress throughout the year as, as everyone works together, sticking to their schedules and being accountable for 2018. Yeah, so supporting each other, right? It takes a community. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think it helps. I mean, I'm excited to have something that has been created by people who are familiar with poker and familiar with the the challenges and all the rest in in, in the poker environment, in the poker economy, to have a, a, a journal, an A-game planner that is made, you know, for poker players. Yeah, so it's completely specific. To, yeah, as you say, everything in there is for poker players rather than the generic planner. And yeah, we, we're really looking forward to the feedback. It's actually at the printers now. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, it's going to be a ton of fun seeing what everyone thinks. Um, you know, a lot of time and effort, money has been spent on it to try and make it good. And um, just really looking forward to seeing how the people in the academy, how everyone in the academy finds it. And if we see the change we're expecting to see, in players who perhaps were struggling following their targets before following their schedules and see the financial difference it makes to players if they're held accountable in this way and if they can track what they're doing this way and then adjust their future scheduling because they, they've tracked it effectively. And then watch the success stories pour in. Exactly. How do you think your 2018 is going to be better than 2017? Uh, I'm really excited about 2018. It's been a roller coaster for you, an amazing few years in terms of the different people I've worked with in poker and in other professional sports and in business. It's been a really exciting time. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what you know how how I'll be able to bring the mindset work to the to other parts of the world as well as the poker world moving forward. It's probably worth mentioning now. Actually, one of the things I'll be doing next year is I'm doing a a, a, a sort of more general podcast where I'll be interviewing um, people at the top of their fields. So outside of poker, um, because we didn't want to you know bring on lots of people outside of poker to the poker podcast. But I think there's lots of interesting conversations to have. So that's one of the things I'll be doing. I'll be launching the, sort of the, the Elliot a game for life podcast so i hope some of the listeners switch across when <laughs> with that don't worry we're still carrying on with this one as well and yeah just excited to see what the what the year brings i think it's it's going to be a ton of fun and yeah it should be a bit of an adventure so. i definitely have a have 
a sense of optimism towards the poker world that has been a little bit waning the last few years. You know, like there's been a lot of doom and gloom. There's been a lot of trials and tribulations, but I, I, I feel really amped up for 2018 nice. in a way that I haven't in the last few years. I mean, I, I sort of have my ear to the ground a lot because I'm talking about people talking to people all over the world in different games on different sites. And things seem to be changing in the poker industry. We've got a new market of India, which is starting to boom. And then Brazil is getting huge. There seems to be some movement in the American legal system with, you know, it it looks like a couple more states may get in next year as well. And obviously, you know, a bit bit of competition for poker stars has come out, changing the (laughs) changing the game a little bit. So that's so good. Anybody I talk to in poker stars, they're thrilled. Honestly, they they the competition just makes them strive to even be better. It's going to help everybody because there's going to be more advertising for poker. The more advertising there is from many directions, the more people will be playing, the more money will be in the community, and the more excitement will be around the game. So, you know, PokerStars is doing some very cool stuff with their platinum packages and their ridiculous MTT series that they're, that they're launching, which, you know, was pretty left field, to be honest. I was quite surprised when I had that news. And then Party, it looks like they've got a huge um, yeah. event online coming on as well, which is going to be just just phenomenal for keep kicking that excitement up. So, um, yeah, all I want is a client to win both of those next year. <laughs> So there you go, Adrian. All uh, right, it's down to you. Um, <laughs> I, I, we'll see how it, yeah, see how it goes. But I think it's going to be an incredibly exciting 2018 for the poker economy. And like you say, there seems to be a new vigor, more excitement, and you know, sort of a. It feels like stepping back a little bit towards the good old days again. Um, mm. Like you say, rather than the doom and gloom and, you know, how dare they stuff that, that has been going on for the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't I can't fake it. If I'm excited about something, you always know. And I'm really excited. So optimism for 2018. Yeah. Lots the of open house. Made. The open house starts December oh, 20... 26th. 26th. Um, yep. Yeah, so um, what we'll do is we'll have a link on the podcast page. If you want to sign up to the free open house event, then you'll get the free, emails free 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 yeah if you, you're listening to this and you don't sign up for the free event why are you listening uh, <laughs> yeah we've got so just click the link um put your email address in you'll get notified when the different videos come out and what the video is about and see if it's one of the ones you want to watch and then the live webinar at the end of the week i'll be doing and i'll be answering some questions about the academy as well if anyone's got any questions about how it works and yeah take it all from there we, we want to share the information we want to show you what we offer and that's why we do it for free so as many people can see it as possible and then you know it'll be up to everyone out there to decide if the academy is something they want to join or not so yeah hopefully hopefully lots of people will be deciding to join me i've been harassing team talent just show up (laughs) just show up (laughs) show up to the live stuff the free spam spam the twitch emotes in the chat (laughs) but yeah It, it, it should be a ton of fun I'm looking forward to it for sure. I guess that's probably it. So to everybody out there, all the best in 2018. I hope it's the year where you achieve things you thought impossible. Yeah, and I hope you will just follow your systems and see where it leads you. There you go. (laughs) Uh, So happy, happy Christmas, happy holidays, happy new year, everyone. And hopefully I'll be seeing a few of you on the 29th in the live webinar. And if you have any questions for me, um, yeah, just ask them in the webinar and I'll do my best. Smash them with the hardest questions you have. (laughs) Keep them simple. Keep them simple. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right <laughs> anyway Adrian, thank you so much and yeah have a great christmas and everyone yeah we'll, we'll see you soon all right we'll see you soon thanks you've been listening to the mindset advantage podcast to get future episodes delivered to you automatically make sure to subscribe via itunes stitcher or your favorite podcasting service to get any resources mentioned in the episode or to listen to past shows visit pokermindcoach.com slash TMA podcast. Thanks for listening.